A number of other areas of research and technology are being advanced by NASA that could further enhance the capabilities and the cost effectiveness of future space solar power systems. Next, you'll see some of these exciting areas in which other technologies are being researched that might someday help to meet tomorrow's energy needs. Many concepts are being considered for the spacecraft platform that will integrate the solar panels, the transmitter elements, and all of the other components of a complete power station. Here is one concept, a conservative baseline, one that will probably never fly, but one that will permit us to develop the system level requirements and allow us to estimate the maximum cost of a power station. Each of the two solar array panels is 10 square kilometers. Each row in the panel is individually driven to continuously face the sun. Failure of the drive mechanism in any one row will leave the power plant fully operational. The phased array transmitter is about one kilometer in diameter. The Terra spacecraft is shown for comparison. The transmitter antenna continuously beams 1.2 gigawatts of microwave power to the receiving antenna on the ground. The power station's structural elements are the central transmitter toroid, the vertical strongbacks, and the individual horizontal row strongbacks. The power generated in the solar panels is sent on a 40 kilovolt bus to the central strongback through roll rings that each pass 5,000 amperes. Solar panels can be individually replaced. The arrays are kept flat by ion engine thrusters, which are first used to raise the power plant modules from low earth orbit and then are used for station keeping and attitude control. The spacecraft replacement components in robots are housed in the garage and warehouse. The electronic boxes on the transmitter toroid are the power station's distributed control center. All communication between them and all other modules are via low-level RF links. The transmitter has many tens of thousands of individually controlled modules. These modules are plugged into a grid structure and can be individually replaced. The modules are individually pointed to the ground antenna. A guide beam from the ground antenna site is used to control the phasing and pointing of each module. Several small antennas around the edge of the module receive this beam. Space Solar Power, Science, Research, and Development at JPL has produced innovative concepts, designs, materials, and laboratory demonstrations. One candidate architecture for SSP power generation and transmission is the HALO concept, which offers the potential of reducing the mass of a solar power system. This concept uses HALO orbital mechanics to position mirrors that direct sunlight to a central power converter and transmitter. Simulations of orbital configurations and force models have shown the viability of the HALO concept to maintain a constant power beam as a function of mirror angular rates and sun incidence angles. Materials development activities have resulted in lightweight carbon-carbon sails exhibiting superior strength at high temperatures. These materials offer low aerial mass and are amenable to various surface modifications or surface treatments. Hence, they may be structured for optimal thrust-to-power ratios under solar, thermal, infrared laser, or microwave irradiation. Carbon sails have been used to investigate the physics of laser-powered flight in vacuum environments. Other tests in a small vacuum chamber using microwave power demonstrated the rapid heating and acceleration achievable by these sails. Theoretical calculations predict accelerations up to 100 gravities with this technique. Various deployment and stability concepts have been demonstrated in the laboratory. These tests show the feasibility of generating torque produced by photon angular momentum for stability and deployment. Computer simulations suggest that polarized microwaves can be used to deploy large solar sails and other gossamer structures. By modifying the surface optical properties and the gas surface interactions, carbon sails have been levitated in rarefied gas against gravity. By using thermomolecular forces and air-breathing sails, high-altitude platforms are possible. 
Furthermore, this technique may be possibly used to lift Gossamer spacecraft through the atmosphere. These activities result not only in a greater understanding of beamed power, but also in the development of advanced concepts and demonstrations to enable beam riding spacecraft, spacecraft capable of high acceleration and stability within a directed beam of light. The increasing complexity and sophistication in space exploration demand that space systems meet expanded flight performance requirements, recover from failure or degradation events, increase reliability and reduce cost. Integrated vehicle health monitoring is the first step towards autonomous systems capable of self-diagnostics, prognostics, maintenance and repair, and ultimately adaptive spacecraft. MEMS technology provides a cost-effective way to achieve distributed sensing and health monitoring. Capitalizing upon SSP development of an inflatable truss, a multi-sensor package was conceived that would be mounted on the truss test article. In this manner, appropriate mechanical and performance parameters could be evaluated against a specific space design element. In a first-generation device, four types of MEMS sensors, temperature, pressure, strain gauges, and accelerometers were chosen and mounted on a flexible laminate substrate. The sensor package was then mounted on a flexible tubing and tested for adhesion and sensor function. In this sensor package, deep reactive ion etching techniques are used to form low profile sensors while achieving high aspect ratios necessary in pressure sensor diaphragms and accelerometer proof masses. Fusion bonding generates high bond strength suitable in high acceleration space environments. Circuitry is embedded in the flexible substrate ready to attach to the test element. To determine where and what type of physical sensing is important, probabilistic failure assessment, or PFA, is being used. Material and mechanical properties as well as environmental and operational parameters will be evaluated to determine critical aspects in SSP design and performance and provide insight into diagnostic and prognostic protocols to achieve high reliability. Incorporation of actuators with embedded sensors result in an active system that can both sense and interact with the environment. Electroactive polymers, or EAP, are capacitive-based materials that show large actuation strain when a voltage bias is applied. Appropriately placed sensor actuators can correct deformities in inflatable components and adjust antenna or reflector surfaces in SSP structures and have applications in a wide range of space endeavors.